Hello everyone and welcome back to the FM Network. My name is Keith from the Observer Football Channel and I'm here today as a guest creator to give you a how-to video on how to recover from losing streaks. Now before we get into today's video, please make sure you subscribe to the FM Network's YouTube page. Make sure you click that subscribe button. And then while you're at it, please make sure to check out my channel link. Link is provided in the description below. And please make sure to also subscribe to my channel because I also do tons of FM22 related content, whether it be playthroughs, tutorials, and just any FM22 related memes. Now let's get right into the video. streaks be a vital part in any FM save. This can make it either the most fun experience or this can make it the most depressing experience. And well, there's nothing better than responding to a losing streak and getting back on the horse and then getting those winning streaks that you ultimately deserve. Why am I here today? I am here today to give you four quick, easy tips to kind of combat how to prevent losing streaks and also how to respond to losing streaks. Tip number one. Tip number one is probably the most vital part of preventing any losing streak from happening. And as in regards to your tactics. So your tactics are always gonna be a way for the opponent to kind of recognize your game and how they plan and prepare for when they play you. For example, if you keep using the same tactic throughout the course of a season, well, I'm sorry, even though if it's giving you a great success throughout the season, I guarantee you, the AI is going to be able to adapt to that, that tactic and they're going to figure out how to get around what you're doing, which is going to cause you to lose games. I recommend that you at least have two preset tactics uh, for when you play teams. So what does this mean? You at least change up your tactic at least once every five games. This way it, get, it kind of throws off the AI in terms of how they scout you. For myself, one of the things I love to do is anytime I come up against a bigger team, so whether it be, for example, I'm against, you know, let's say Man City, a Tottenham, a United, or even a Liverpool, I'm going to play, I'm going to be playing more of a, of a counter type of tactic. So for example, here I'm playing a 4-3-3 with one center defensive mid, and I'm playing it as a cautious mentality. So waiting for, you know, Liverpool or Man City to be put out of position where I can catch them on the counter. However, in those, in those games where let's say you're going against, let's say, a smaller team, what I think you're going to do here is I would recommend playing a positive mentality or a more of attacking nation. Games are able to be more attacking. This gives you the ability to be able to score more goals and to be a little bit more free and more expressive while playing extra skilled teams. So this will make sure that your confidence goes up while also giving the ability to be able to better yourself within the standing. important because going forward, your AI is not going to be able to have, it's going to have a harder time responding to your tactics and be able to have a hard time scouting you so they can adjust accordingly to what tactic you're playing. Most FM players, again, either are just lazy, negligent, or just think that their tactic is the most perfect thing in the world. So again, just always make sure you keep it fresh and just make sure that you always just change up your tactics once in a while. Even if you just have different ways of setting it, just try and throw off the AI as much as you can. One other quick little tip here as well, this is a little bonus. Um, one time, sometimes the AI can base the tactics off your reputation. So what do I mean that by this? So for example, we're gonna check out Man City. So Man City's reputation is obviously going to be quite high. Man City has a worldwide reputation of four and a half star. This means they're like the tip of the top. They're like one of the best teams in the world. However, when you go to Everton, uh, they're not going to have as high of a reputation. So for example, we only have a national three and a half star. So what will happen sometimes, the AI might base their tactic based on their reputation alone. So if I'm going against a Man City, take a look at my reputation and think that we're not as good as a team as them just based on that. So again, just type another way for you to kind of acknowledge whether or not how the team is going to play and how the opposition will kind of respond to your tactics. Second most important tip, uh, this is in regards to team morale. Team morale probably has to be one of the most vital parts of how your team performs. The most crucial tab that you should absolutely check out anytime throughout the save is your dynamics tab. You should be in here constantly. Now, one of the things here you can see here, so the three categories you're gonna take a look at here is team cohesion, club atmosphere, and managerial support. If you find these columns all on the red, saying that it's horrible, they don't have any managerial support for you, and the club atmosphere is awful, this means that your team is not gonna perform at, the, at its most optimal performance. This means that they're gonna play horribly, the team's not motivated, and this is most likely gonna cause you to lose games. So again, 
that's one way to find that out as well. And I always recommend for any player, just make sure you check your happiness tab because this will give you any indication about any unhappiness from players within your team. So this will give you a pretty heads up about anything that does come up. And as you can see here in my Everton save, I do have some players concerned about training. So that might be something I might have to take a look at. Now, you might be asking yourself, how do I combat these, this morale? How do I keep them happy? A couple things you can do. So the first thing I always recommend, and this is probably the most easiest thing to do, is to always praise them or criticize them based on their training performance. So one way you can, you can see this is either getting prompted by you know, the inbox, by your email, or simply you can just take a look at the training tab. This will basically bring up your highlighted performance of your, of your best players in training. So for example, Donnie Van de Beek has been my best person in training this week, and I always make sure just to praise them. They usually really, really take note of this and they'll appreciate it. For example, here, Andy Lonergan, not as good in training, and always as well, I'm gonna criticize him basically saying I expect more out of him. Nine times out of 10, they're always gonna respond positively to this and this makes sure that you have a deep bond with this player and it keeps them motivated. Now, just note though, if you keep doing this over and over again, this will ultimately uh, lead them to get annoyed and sometimes they can have a negative impact in the conversation. So do it, but don't overdo it. The last type of method you should do in terms of morale is holding a team meeting. Team meetings are very high risk, high reward. This can be very potential good reward in terms of how your team responds to your team meeting, how they can go going forward, or it can just really piss them off and it can only make your play even worse. But in cases you have to go through this, one thing you can do is you can go to the dynamics tab. One area here is you can see the team meeting button. And this will bring up different functions here about, you know, if you want to keep up the great form, if you want to say that, you know, it hasn't been great lately, uh, or just something I haven't been playing well as of late. So for example, I'm just gonna say here because my team's been winning, I'm gonna say this, and typically that encourages the team. So this only, not only does this help maintain the team's morale, but also it makes sure that I keep that positive relationship with the squad. So again, you can use this also to not only to recover from a, from a losing streak, but you can also use this to maintain a winning streak as well. So some very high risk, high reward, but something you make use of. The third cheeky method you can do to kind of help boost your you know, overall morale within the squad and how can I help get some confidence back, this is going to be able to arrange friendlies. So what I mean by this is that, so for example, in your calendar here, if you look at your schedule, one thing you can do, so let's say you have a couple between games. Now, let's just see, I don't know, let's just say it's the 21st here. One thing you can do is you can arrange a friendly. Now, always choose like a smaller reputation side, let's just say FC Halifax. So what will happen here is that I will make a, I will make a friendly with FC Halifax and what this does, this allows me to play my players, be able to score many goals, to get their confidence up and to get their overall morale might be a method as well for you, just to give your overall players morale up and help have the team score some goals again. So another good little tip to make use of as well. Now the fourth and probably most least impactful tip, but it still does have a little bit of impact depending on how you use it. Now this is being able to make team bonding activities with your team. So this will be able to help increase that you know, cohesion and some of the club atmosphere just around your squad so how it helps make the team develop more chemistry. So one thing you can do here is if you go into the training tab here, go into your calendar, let's just go next week, check, let's just select a portion here and you can plan to have team bonding activities. So this is something that will very help cohesion, very help with, you know, overall chemistry in your squad. And this also helps with the fatigue. If you have some players who are very fatigued just from your last matches and stuff like that, Always make sure that these that your that if players are jaded, make sure you give them a rest and always implement some team bonding activities because this will not only help your players fatigue, but also help your overall chemistry and cohesion within your squad. And this is something that you'll be able to use greatly going forward. And that is it for today's video. If you guys have any questions or any type of, or any advice in general about how to implement these tactics I mentioned today, please make sure to leave a comment below. Uh, either myself or the network will respond to your questions or concerns. Uh, as soon as we can and again i just want to say thank you so much for the network for allowing me to be a guest creator it's always a pleasure to be help out with the channel because ultimately i care about the community and hopefully some of these tactics are you know an easy way for you to kind of improve your game in fm22 in this case helping you recover from the losing streak again my name is keith from observer of football have a great day